Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's another example of how to calculate the rotational kinetic energy of a disk. We're even going to do a little bit more. We're going to calculate the total kinetic energy of this disk, and then we're going to calculate the percent of the total energy is actually the rotational kinetic energy. Notice that the disk is not just rotating in place, but it's also moving. It has a translational velocity of 10 meters per second, which means that the total kinetic energy is equal to the sum of the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy. So in this case, this is equal to 1 half mv squared for the translational kinetic energy plus 1 half i omega squared for the rotational kinetic energy. Now since we're dealing with a solid disk, i is therefore equal to 1 half the mass times the radius squared. If we plug that in here, we get the following. This is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half times 1 half. And let's see here. I use a small m here. I should use the same small m over here so that we're consistent. So I'll just write 1 half m r squared times omega squared. Now there's a relationship between the translational velocity and the rotational velocity, the angular velocity. We know that, by definition, the translational velocity is equal to r times omega, which means that omega, the angular velocity, is equal to the ratio of the translational velocity divided by the radius. We can plug that in here, and instead of writing omega squared, we can write v squared over r squared. Now notice that we have an r squared here and an r squared there. That cancels out, and we can multiply this out, now we get 1 half mv squared plus 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 quarter mv squared. Notice that this here is the translational kinetic energy, and this term here represents the rotational kinetic energy. And notice that the rotational kinetic energy in this case is half the translational kinetic energy. Now we can plug in the values and see what we get. This is equal to 1 half times the mass which is 2 kilograms times the velocity squared, which is 10 squared, plus 1 quarter times the mass to times the velocity of 1 up. I'm getting ahead of myself. 10 squared. So this is equal to, and of course the kinetic energy will be in terms of joules. That will be 100 joules for the translational kinetic energy plus 50 joules for the rotational kinetic energy for a total of 100 and, oop, 150 joules of total kinetic energy. So kinetic energy total is equal to 150 joules. What is the percentage of that that then is made up by the rotational kinetic energy? So the percent of uh, rotational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy is equal to well, we take the rotational kinetic energy and divide it by the total kinetic energy and multiply that times 100%. So in this case, we know that 50 joules was the rotational kinetic energy, 150 joules is the total energy times 100%, which means that the percentage that, that is taken up by the rotational kinetic energy is 33.3%. Basically, one-third of all the energy is rotational kinetic energy, and two-thirds of it is translational kinetic energy. Of course, that's the case here because the rolling disk is a solid disk. It would be different, a different ratio if this was a hollow disk or it was a different kind of object that was rotating. And that is then how we find the translational kinetic energy and the rotational energy as well as the total energy of a rotating object like a solid disk. That's how it's done.